Hello my Soccer Universe for a somewhat than expected uh, review of what was happening in Portugal and in Spain over the past, yeah, roughly a week. But you know, that's how it checks out. We didn't have any Champions League or any Europa League in the midweek. So we have some time and we can recap all of that. You saw in the thumbnail, title hopes are dwindling, not only for Real Madrid, but also for Porto, who had a major upset at home in a game where everything went against them. And it actually means now that Benfica look rather set on the winning the uh, title in Portugal. However, at least Porto, unlike Real Madrid, still have a hope in the cup. Yes, Real Madrid still have a hope in the cup. Losing the Classico to Barcelona and I guess I that's a reason why I'm making this video today because after Classico you need, a, need to talk about the Classico. Losing at, losing at home is maybe just, just, just a big goal doesn't mean the end of it all. However, um, Real Madrid don't look good. The only time they look good was in the favorite competition, the Champions League, where one is still inclined to say, yeah, uh, if they put the similar performances together, they might actually win that competition again, because that's the one that counts for Real Madrid. Copa del Rey, not, not so much, even if it is against Barcelona. And La Liga, seemingly also. Even if you have a derby, you show up very uh, limp, to say the least. Then you even go up a man by Rüdiger selling an elbow uh, very well. You get in and you get the equalizer, but it doesn't translate. It really doesn't translate. And yesterday Real Madrid might have had all the, you know, if you watch the game, uh, they were seemingly always in control. There are lots of the ball, but they couldn't break down Barcelona. And let's move to the other giant who has, of course, big title hopes. Uh, out of the Europa League, then losing it to Almeria uh, at a time where they really could have gone to the next level and really sealed the deal in La Liga. However, they got the big win at Real Madrid. But let's face it, this is not Barcelona. This is a team that is defensively sound and offensively, yeah, here, 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 and here, and there, we strike a goal and we have good quality. It's Barca Nacho. And I have to say, if all the years watching Barcelona, this to me is the team that I'm least sympathetic to. I don't like watching Barcelona at the moment. I really don't. And uh, the leadership of, of the club doesn't endear themselves either. Not only the squad built on so many uh, depth but in addition now, and I forgot to mention in the last video, now the allegations that they have been paying of a referee who was influential in the, you know, for services to tell uh, um, the team, yeah, how certain to prepare them for referees. But in reality, overpaying and that guy having an influence on which referees to get, I think there's a major scandal brewing there. And at this point, and I have always been in Spain, I was always more on the Barcelona side. But if those allegations become true, and if the financial troubles go further, I actually won't see Barcelona punished. And by punishment, I mean a, Bar a, a Juve-like punishment. And that might be the biggest title for Real Madrid to win La Liga this season. I don't think it will happen. Uh, it, this will take some time. But... I really got to say, at this moment, I'm very much not with Barcelona. Very, very, very much so. Let's start the review of uh, the happenings in Liga Portugal. I'm, I want to start with Benfica's 2-0 win at Vizela, which was not the most important thing. Is you know, João Mario scores two goals, uh, last one a penalty. And... Celebrating, uh, Coach Roger Schmidt sees suddenly a bottle thrown at him, which he, it was not a throw. I mean, he pulls it right back into the stands, which of course he should do, and then uh, engages with the crowd, shows big send off, shows, yeah, we want 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0. Major scandal. Yes, uh, I totally understand why he's doing it, because you know, why is a bottle thrown at him in the first place? But don't throw it back. But I know the emotion got, 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 got to him. It makes for, you know, 
Benfica being loved even more. However, that win was rather crucial because as I said already in um, the opening thoughts, Porto lose at home to Gil Vicente in a game that went their way maybe for 20, 20, 20 minutes where Taremi gave them the lead after four minutes. They, he scored even early one, was offside. Had the game squarely under control with the first attack, Navarro gets an equalizer. And then it really fell. Everything went against Porto. João Mario is being sent off uh, for a handball. Initially he got a yellow, VAR intervened, it's a red card. Then a penalty, again via VAR, yes it was a penalty, Morito makes it 2-1 for Gil Vicente and to top it off Uribe is getting set off right after the half with a yellow red and then the one goal, they score even with two men less, they score an equalizer and it's also called off by VAR, VAR completely going, every decision was correct. It has to be said, but if you're the coach and if you're a Porto fan, it must have felt like you're in the wrong movie. This is a game that you should have won by the 20th minute and you lose it at home and now the gap widens and I really don't see Porto uh, coming back there and also bad week for Porto because they just had won lost to Inter. Uh, Sporting uh, get an easy win over Sturil and then uh, the big Northern Derby. I mean, what's happening with Braga? Uh, they were so starting brightly, like at the beginning of the season they were starting brightly, at the beginning of the year they were starting brightly and now another really really hard um, loss for, 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 for them. Going also a man down, then Thiago Silva converts a penalty, Safira, it's not the Thiago Silva from PSG, uh, so Safira doubles up, then this Thiago Silva gets as a hand off, but, very, uh, but they take uh, Braga only to, uh, goal to get back. And so overall, we have now the um, uh, standings. We have an eight-point gap. It seems it's Benfica's to lose. And Benfica are way too good this season. Yes, they have not always been convincing. Braga have to now uh, see whether they can hang on to third place. They have potentially the cup as well. But third place would mean Champions League qual 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 qualification. Where Sporting is getting uh, a little bit closer as well. Um, but at the moment, they are still set on third place. As I said, it's very much Benfica. Uh, look, looking at the fixtures for the next two weeks, I'm just picking up Benfica, Fan Family Cow, uh, this upcoming weekend, Portimonense against Sporting and Chavez against Porto. And Braga have to play home to Rio Ave. Um, and then, yeah, also not uh, Porto, head of Champions League against Turil. Uh, we have Braga at Vizela, who just lost to Benfica. Benfica have to go to uh, last place Maritimo and Sporting play at home to Boavista, which is a traditional duel, but not uh, Boavista, not up there at this very moment. Okay, let's go to La Liga, where the weekend started with a rather impressive game between Elche and Betis. And honestly, that was a game... <laughs> Also, many red cards, but uh, last place Elche, who are atrocious this season. Uh, only one win, and they are going down. They had a 2 0 lead after 10 minutes against the Betis team that has been kind of uh, faltering also a little bit after a bright start. However, within two, two minutes, there are two red cards for Elche players. Borja Iglesias converts in a penalty, and Miranda quickly thereafter equalizes. Then Iglesias misses a penalty in the 88th and only a very late deep stoppage time penalty. After the third Elche player had been sent off for handling the ball and William Jose converts that one. Crazy game not going for Elche in any case. Loads of red cards also in La Liga this season. Um, I also should, 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 should mention, I think I didn't um, do it because I, I was aware there was a major uh, incident that Kadith is now uh, really upset. I think it was in a, um, uh, in a recent game where uh, an offside uh, was not seen, which cost them points and they are now appealing. Kadith actually getting a 1-0 win. Uh, against Rayo Vallecano. However, it was all about the Derby Mil Madrid, Rilenio. And what a boring game that was. Real Madrid couldn't. And uh, Atletico Madrid didn't, didn't want to. It actually turned up a notch when, you know, first Camavinga, Modric and Germany came on. 
Then Angel Correa decides to elbow uh, Antonio Rüdiger, which maybe he was selling it quite some. For me, it was a red card because the referee had been rather strict at that point, and yet the elbow is probably not, not enough to bring Antonio Rüdiger down. But it was not, not, not like, look, also the height the, 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 the difference. I mean, Angel Correa is so much smaller than the Rüdiger that he basically got it in the stomach. With a man down, actually, Atletico Madrid played it quite well, and the Griezmann assisted uh, Jose Maria Jimenez. Hasn't scored for a long time to make it 1 0 for Atleti, and I really thought at that point that uh, he will uh, move uh, forward. However, Alvaro Rodriguez comes on. Tall, 18 year old, second, uh, second game for Real Madrid. Uh, he actually had a pretty bad uh, start to his, uh, <laughs> to his uh, game. But then he equalizes with a header. Out of nowhere, and Real Madrid get away with a 1 1. But at this point, everyone thought, yeah, this is points drop for Real Madrid. Barcelona go to Almeria and will get the points. Well, that was not to be. Actually, as it turns out, Real Madrid are shortening the lead, but it is not with any confidence there. Uh, Valencia, who I'm wearing, got under their new coach a really big win on goal from Subeldia. Rasos that have been a really good team, probably the third best team easily in Spain so far. That they lose to Valencia, a Valencia team who are relegation threatened at this point, uh, is a pretty big boost and shot in them for Valencia. Atletico Bilbao against Girona uh, was a rather entertaining 2-3. Girona is actually quite the entertaining team, but we have to talk about Almeria. Beating Barcelona, a Barcelona team that uh, was relying on crosses into the box that they did over and over and over again. A very limp, boring to watch Barcelona side. And the goal by Touré, everything that they didn't know. He changed up the defense fans again um, and it did not work. It just did not work. They give up a goal and they cannot get, get one back. So Almeria, in a very weird stadium, gets the win. Then, uh, if you want to have real entertainment, watch highlights of Sevilla against Osasuna. This was an Osasuna team that was all gearing up for the semifinal in the Copa del Rey. Playing a second string team, still get, 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 get the win. But um, had him 1 0 lead at the half. Nemanja Gudel scores another screamer, and he only scores screamers. Uh, he has now three, three goals this season after not scoring for, I think, two years or whatever. What great goals they were. However, it is then uh, Bono who completely misses a cross, <laughs> and the uh, ball goes on to Fernando and into his own. Uh, and one of the nastiest own goals you will see. Enesiri with a great move equalizes, but then Ezaizuli gets the winner. After just come coming on for Osasuna, big win for for them and Sevilla cannot get out of the relegation zone, and then Villarreal also get a rare win. Villarreal is also a team that had lost four uh, in in a row, getting a win again. And so with these results, Barca, yes, it's a point less, but still very much in control of the league, uh, more, a slight, slight more than eight percent. Atletico and Real Sociedad probably will round out the top four because I don't think that Betis, Arayo, Villarreal will actually threaten there. It's very interesting on the bottom though. Uh, we have now Valencia still in the relegation zone. Valladolid uh, had a, a quick spur, but also now two losses in a row. Um, Almeria maybe not quite safe despite the big win uh, against Barca. Sevilla I think is not quite out there. It is really, really tight. I think everyone from Espanyol down might be in danger of getting relegated. Um, the model says it's Getafe, Valladolid and Elche because those are relatively low rate, rate and don't have enough points. Upcoming games, um, I think Atletico Madrid Sevilla would be a great one, except that Sevilla is just horrendous this season. We have uh, same thing goes for Barcelona, Valencia. Valencia is not an opponent, but maybe, maybe against this Barca they could get, get, get something. Betis Real Madrid seems to be the game to watch Maybe Betis can come back. Let's see. All not very exciting, to be honest. And then um, the week after, we have another class with Athletic Club against Barcelona. Although I would expect Barca to win there again with the Barca Nacho. Uh, Real Madrid play against Espanyol. Um, I think those are the outstanding games. I mean, Real, Real Betis could be a fun one. 
Let's move to the Copa del Rey, where I did not see much except a uh, uh, winning goal by Ezra Yuli, but I th from Walder he also sort of deserved a 1-0 win over Athletic Club, and this would be a major thing. I mean, this is a quasi-derby, would be major uh, task for them, uh, uh, um, achieving for them to make it to the final, where of course they will be outsiders to ever wins the Clasico semi-final. That Clasico was probably one of the worst Clasicos I've ever seen. Real Madrid having control, however, um, uh, Ronald Arujo seems to have Vinny's number because he is about as fast and just he, uh, Vinny cannot get past him. And Real Madrid were rather slow, and uh, although there was Modric having a really good chance already in the first minute. Uh, Benzema scores a goal, clearly offside there. And then the goal for Barcelona was one of those freak ones. It was also first given uh, offside, but uh, Frank Kessier was not offside. The Rüdiger's, um, uh, but basically pulled, pulled, pulled him onside. Uh, he runs on, on the goal, it's saved by Kruel Couture, but the um, rebound falls to Ed, 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 Ed Militao towards the, uh, his own on net, and Nacho Fernandez cannot even clear it off the line. It was a really freak, weird goal. I think it was also only the only shot of Barcelona on goal as far as I can remember. Nah, it's not true because there's another slapstick scene involving Frank Kekasi. I mean, honestly, as a Milan uh, fan, I was really uh, not happy with Kessie leaving for Barca, but on, on, on the other side, he did so great for, for the Football Club that I actually want him team to do well, and I think he can give this Barca side some, some, some something. But Barca saw it out defensively. Seeded the ball to uh, Real Madrid, and that was that. Uh, and then the only other big chance, I think there was nothing really for Real Madrid, except I think uh, one from uh, a, a direct shot that went way over the, over the bar, but there was not really anything coming. Um, the only big chance was Kessier, uh, who is nicely put up by Ferran Torres, takes a shot and goal, and who clears it before the line? Ansu Fati. I mean, it was another one of those tell tell tells you ever, 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 everything about that Clasico. I want to actually edit Barcelona wins, but I actually want to end this with uh, a cool video that I saw and I probably will link it up of the new Bernabeu where the pitch can actually be removed, but it's not like that it moves out onto the open like many other do because there's no space. It's in the middle of the city. No! They uh, split it up into six bands that are then stored underground on top of each other. That is rather cool. And actually, if you look, it, if you look it up, if you look um, at the pitch, you can actually see where the bands. It's six bands that are nicely separated. It's a really, really interesting. Watch that video. But that was it from me from Portugal and Spain. Yeah, not too much to talk about. And I have to have to say, I have not followed especially Spain all, all the much, although I saw all the big games uh, involving Real Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, namely, we'll talk more in about two weeks' time. In any case, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a line below if you want to add anything. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!